you talk to any Porsche enthusiast, they know that in general people say that the newer GT4 and Spyder, they just don't sound quite as good as the old generation and the 981 GT4s and Spyder. And there's a few reasons, but I think one of the biggest reasons is found right here. These fat cans right here are the gas particulate filters or GPFs, sometimes called OPFs. They're essentially another exhaust filter, a lot like the catalytic converter. They're a new mandated item. You see, back in 2016, the 981 didn't have them because they didn't really exist for Porsches back then. But now we gotta have them. In Europe and many countries, they have sensors on them. And if you were to delete that, get a check engine light, you'd have to have it programmed out. But we're here in the good old US of A where there are no sensors on these things, not yet at least. So we can ditch that fat can and have no issues. And that's what we're doing in this episode. We're gonna replace the over axle pipes to delete the GPFs. Now, if you're here just to see the detailed install, jump to this time right here. If you're here to see the heat shielding and install, jump to this time right here. Otherwise, I encourage you to stick around, pay attention, because I'm gonna tell you all about your options, benefits, and potential drawbacks of installing over axle pipes. This is an aftermarket over axle pipe. It's called that because it hops over the axle. That's right, it connects the exhaust manifold back here with the catalytic converter, goes over the axle between all the suspension components, and then connects to the muffler there. Notice this one doesn't have that fat can on it because it deletes the GPF. This is what we're gonna install on the car today, so let's check it out. Now these are over axle pipes from Fab Speed Motorsports. These are in stainless steel and there are many manufacturers of these. They're pretty basic, just two and a half inch pipes and they delete the gas particulate filter. You have your choices of stainless steel. Some companies offer titanium or in canal. Those are definitely lighter weight, which is always a good thing for the Porsche, but they're also gonna make your wallet a lot lighter as well. They should all sound pretty similar as they're all pretty much the same design. However, the expensive materials might sound a little different as well. You do have options for resonators with a lot of companies, and you do generally have an option for some type of heat coating. Some offer jet hot coating, and some also offer like a metallic heat shielding. And I suggest you order that with your pipes. Now, these aren't that cheap to begin with, around $2,000 on average, which is definitely a Porsche tax because the Camaro owners could have a full set of headers and stainless steel exhaust for that price. But that's the way it is. Now there's plenty of people out there running these pipes without heat shielding, but I gotta tell you, it's pretty clear that Porsche thinks you need heat shielding. They put it on their own product, even some heat shielding to protect the tire from the gas particulate filter. So running these straight like this without heat shielding, a lot of people do it, yes. But there have been some reports, not sure how confirmed, that some suspension components have been damaged by the excessive heat coming off of these pipes. So I highly recommend some type of heat protection. In this episode, we're gonna do DIY heat protection, and I'm gonna show you how it's done on this pipe. Now, I didn't buy these from Fab Speed Motorsports, otherwise I would've had the heat shielding come with them, and I probably would've picked titanium. No, I bought these used. Oh my God, used parts of my Porsche. Yeah, that's right. I bought these from an Instagrammer, gtsilver991.2. You should follow him on Instagram. He actually has a GT4. You can follow his journey there. He has some good posts. And if you're not following me yet, be sure to do that. So yeah, I've got used pipes, no big deal. They're just like brand new ones. Oh, they're not shiny and new, you say? Well, guess what? Your new pipes are gonna look just like this after a couple thousand miles, and probably worse. So it's up to me to get heat shielding on. I've already done this one, a total DIY. I love DIY projects, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. And then we're gonna get to the detailed install of these pipes on my car. Now let me make something very clear. We aren't looking to seal up these pipes from heat to do the whole like heat scavenging and improving flow and power like you might do for headers. That's the job of say jet hot coatings and you can do that on here. But for me, the only goal is to protect those suspension components from the heat from this and so we need heat shielding. 
I've ordered this product from Amazon and there's a little more expensive product called Heat Shield Products. They all seem to be pretty much the same, an aluminum layer with a fiberglass insulation attached to the back. And you can get it in half inch like this or quarter inch. I think I'd recommend the quarter inch is how I would do it if I were to do this again. It's a little easier to work with. Now I haven't done anything like this before, so it took a little time and it was a fun project. I had to figure out how to get all the right shapes off of this onto here. And I started by simply wrapping pieces of craft paper around and doing multiple edits until it seemed to be the right shape. And then I transfer that to cardboard and try again. And you have to increase the size of your parts as the diameter of the wrap gets bigger. I wrapped it up in cardboard, I was pretty happy with it. And then I just transferred the shapes onto my insulation here. You want some gloves because this fiberglass gets very itchy. It's not good for you. If you really want to be careful, you should have some breathing protection, but I'm also going to use some eye protection. I also recommend a long sleeve shirt and this will prevent fibers from getting on your arms and they just get itchy and you just need to go take a shower. You know, need some heavy duty shop shears to cut this up. I'm going to cut out all these shapes and then we're going to put them on the pipe. All right, now that we've cut out the first piece, we're gonna apply it to the pipe. Once it's fitted on there real well, we're going to fit on some stainless steel hose clamps, or there are special wraps and ties you can use for this, or just use some Inconel wire, something that's heat resistant. All right, that's it. Looks pretty good on this side. This is the side that's gonna have uh, all the suspension nearby. And on the back side, we need to clean up where the foam's showing. Now you may see I use this aluminized tape on here. Unfortunately, the glue on that tape just can't handle the heat from these pipes and the glue ended up melting and it smells really bad and it will for quite a few miles. So I don't recommend the tape. Now another thing to note here is be careful on how far you extend uh, the insulation over here. This may be difficult for me to get this uh, nut or bolt on, but uh, it's something to pay attention to. All right, we have completed the heat shielding on our over axle pipes. They aren't pretty, but no one's gonna see them and they're gonna be functional protecting our suspension and that's what's important. Now, if you're wondering if this actually works, of course, I tested it and got some numbers for you. After a normal drive with oil temperature at 220 degrees, here's the before results. With the stock over axle pipe, the GPF is hitting about 117 degrees on its heat shield. With the new pipes in my insulation, hitting 125 degrees or so, which isn't far off from stock, that's great. But the over axle portion was hitting 130 degrees. What do the original stock pipes do? 260 degrees, so it definitely made a difference there and that's where it counts. All right, it's actually been a few weeks. I've been very busy, but it's time to install these. So the over axle pipes are here. I'm gonna show you how to pull these off and put these in. First, I'll start by showing you all the attachment points for the over axle pipes and to see everything more clearly, including the muffler attachment points, we're going to remove the center diffuser section here, which is held on by six T25 Torx screws. Let's get underneath and see what we have. Over on the left is the first GPF and there are five bolts holding that on on that end to the muffler. Over on the right, same thing, five bolts holding it onto the muffler. And in the center, the muffler is mounted to the car with only these four bolts. Over at the other end of the axle pipes, you've got three studs and nuts holding the pipes to the catalytic converters on each side. It's as simple as that, but there are some details, so let's get started. On each side, you'll find the exhaust valves with a stainless steel hose attached. It's best with a glove, but pull them straight off. That's all you gotta do. Then we're gonna detach the OPS from the muffler. There's five 12 millimeter nuts. So just get them loose and remove them. Use your ratchet and a combo of extensions as necessary to access each one. You'll find that some of them are easier to get from the wheel well. Repeat the same steps for the other connection from the gas particulate filter to the muffler. Now, although it's not required to remove the muffler to remove the over axle pipes, I can tell you that removing these four bolts and nuts are gonna make your job way easier. 
First, I'll just remove the two 12 millimeter nuts and then use the 12 e torx to remove these bolts. But I'm not going to remove them all the way. I'm going to get under the car, support the muffler because these are the only things holding the muffler in place besides the studs from the overaxle pipes. These studs right here are what we need to get past. So you're gonna have to push the muffler towards the rear of the car to get over those studs and drop it down. So a little bit of wiggling and it comes out. It's kind of heavy, so you might want some assistance if you're not able-bodied. Okay, on the other end of the overaxle pipes, we have the catalytic converter connection. These are 12 millimeter nuts on studs. And what's gonna happen is those whole studs and nuts are gonna come out all together. And that is exactly what we want. So it's a little tricky to get in here. You'll need a good combo of universal joint extensions, wobble extensions maybe, and a ratchet. And once you get them all out, then we can remove the overaxle pipe. All right, so here's everything out. Notice what we get. The original outlets of the OPFs were two inches and the new ones are two and three eighths inches. So a little bit of a gain in diameter there is always great. Now you'll find metal gaskets at each end of the over axle pipe. You'll probably end up reusing this if your kit didn't come with new ones and reusing them is fine. They only go one way on the outlets. As for the other end where it connects to the catalytic converter, there's a gasket there and it is supposed to go a certain way. So pay attention as you pull it out, but I'll show you how it goes in later. If you bought new pipes and you already have all the included hardware, skip ahead to the time on the screen. Otherwise, I didn't have any hardware with my used pipes, so I had to run to the hardware store and this is why. The stock pipes have pretty thin flanges where they attach to the catalytic converter and the studs that come with it are fine. But those studs aren't long enough to go through the thick flanges of the fab speed pipes. There just isn't enough thread for proper engagement. So I picked up six M8 by 1.25 and 30 millimeter long bolts with lock washers to use in this case. So that's the size you'll need to screw into the catalytic converter. The stock pipes had these studs, remember? Well, the new pipes don't, and the mufflers don't have threaded holes, so you're gonna need 10 nut, bolt, and washer combos. My hardware store was out of metric, but if it would've got metric, it would've been, again, M8 by 1.25 and 30 to 35 millimeters. This is basically what FabSpeed would've given me in the first place. I put a bolt, a washer, and then on the other side, I used one of these locking nuts. Did that for all of them, and they hold great. Now about that catalytic converter gasket, check it out. On the top left in this picture is a tab plus a little half circle cut out of the metal. You need to point the tab down and a little half circle back towards the cat. Install the pipe in the reverse fashion that you pulled it out and make sure you have one of your bolts handy so you can pin it in place and have the others handy so you can easily reach them. I got a couple started and then I grabbed the appropriate tools such as a socket or a wrench to start to tighten these bolts. On these fab speed pipes specifically, I found that the inner bolt closest to the body was so close to the pipe, I couldn't fit a socket over it. Now I could also bring this bolt in from the other side as long as it was long enough, that's another way to deal with this, uh, but I tried to just use an open-ended wrench and that didn't work either because the body was too close. So I ended up going to Harbor Freight and for 14 bucks, I got a full set of these stubby wrenches and that did the job for me. All right, that's one side. Now we'll move over to the other and repeat the same process. On the driver's side with these fab speed pipes, I found that this one got a little closer to the body at the top of the bend. I was really surprised and with my insulation, it was actually touching the body. I couldn't even fit this paper through. Without the insulation, I think there'd be some clearance, but it was pretty tight. You definitely don't want a solid piece of metal exhaust touching your body. You will feel and hear it. Uh, but in this case, I think I'm good since it's only the insulation. All right, now that those two pipes are in, it's time to bring the muffler in. I'm glad I do my sit-ups because this thing is heavy and trying to lay down under the car so it helps to have a friend. Unfortunately, the new pipes don't have studs for you to easily hook the muffler onto. So I'm gonna hold it up here with my knee while I try to get one or two of the muffler mounting nuts in place. And once I do, then I can finish getting the others in place. Go ahead and leave it a little loose though, cause you'll wanna slide your gaskets back in there and then get your new nut and bolt combos started. It doesn't really matter which direction you send the bolt through as long as they're all on there. 
I did most of them from underneath, but some of them were easier in the wheel well. Don't worry about tightening them up yet because you gotta do the other side too. So slip in your gasket and get all your nuts and bolts in. Once all the nuts and bolts are on and they're somewhat snug, you can start tightening them up. Now with any two flat metal surfaces coming together, it's always a good idea to tighten a nut and bolt and then do one fairly opposite from that one and then keep doing it in opposite directions. Sort of like a star pattern like you would for your wheels. Just a good idea. Now I don't have torque specs on this, just make them nice and firm. You probably noticed how tight they were when you removed them. Just try to do that. We'll check for leaks later. Once the over axle pipes are bolted on, don't forget to tighten up your muffler mounts. That's two E12s and two 12 millimeter nuts. Lastly, you wanna hook up your exhaust valve hoses again, unless you just wanna go full loud all the time. Before you do, you might wanna to slide these clips off the hose, flip them around, and then you can use them to clip onto this upper heat shield. And that's because, remember, the old over axle pipes had spots to clip the hoses to, but you don't have those anymore. One more thing before I finish up, I'm gonna use an E13 socket to remove each exhaust tip and throw a little something else on there for a different look. Now that everything's in place, we're gonna start the car and take a look for leaks before we put the wheels back on and go have a drive. As a reminder, this is how it used to sound. <laughs> And this is how she sounds now. Well, folks, the big question, of course, how does it sound? I love it. It's just perfect. Just enough extra volume to not be obnoxious because I hate obnoxious exhausts. And it adds some throw to your grunts there and even an occasional pop or two. Now I'm pretty sensitive to drone and I was worried about that. And at first didn't notice any, but after a bit of driving, I did find a one condition where there's a little bit of drone. Freeway speeds, 70 miles an hour around and 2000 to 2500 RPM. If there's a slight grade to the freeway and you gotta add a little more throttle and put it under load, I did notice a little drone there, but not enough for me to care. Of course, at higher throttle settings, uh, some of you may interpret all that noise as a little bit of drone, uh, but to me, it's just excitement. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, you know, when you force the exhaust valves open with a valve controller, uh, Porsche naturally closes the valves 2,000 to 4,000 RPM no matter what. But when you force them open, there's drone in that zone. And when you do this mod, it's gonna be even heavier in that zone, especially with both windows open for some reason. Pretty wild. Now, real quick, I wanna plug my buddy Jerry's business, JT's Custom Creations. You may have spotted this license plate frame in the video earlier. Real carbon fiber, he puts a lot of love and soul into these, ceramic coats them, and he can customize it. This one, of course, on a YouTube channel, you can put GT4, you can put Porsche on there, just talk to him and uh, you can get one. I think it's really nice and he really cares about the quality of the work and the product. I think you'll be truly happy. I'll have a link down below. Now, one of the goals with this car was to try to get it sounding closer to that beautiful 981 GT4 sound, and I think we're getting closer. And if you want to hear what a 718 sounds like right next to a 981, check out my other video being released with this one. Link up here, one down in the description, uh, where we compare them side by side. And then we throw this one in there, modified, to see if we got any closer to that beautiful 981 sound. So be sure to check that out. And if you like this video, show me by hitting the like button subscribe and consider hitting the bell to be notified of future Porsche content. Thanks so much for watching the Jeff Fuel Only channel. We'll see you next time.